way with Aston Villa beating Leeds by two goals to one. That's four wins in six Premier League matches under Unai Emery. Tomorrow, we have the Manchester derby to look forward to between Manchester United and Man City at Old Trafford before four three o'clock kickoffs, including that big game at the bottom between Everton and Southampton. Then Brentford against Bournemouth is the late game on Saturday. Three matches to come on Sunday, including the North London derby at Tottenham. Newcastle also face Fulham before Chelsea take on Crystal Palace. That's the game we're going to focus on now. So let's hear from Patrick Vieira. But first, an under pressure, Graham Potter. I think Patrick's done a, a fantastic job since he's been there. Um, they've always got dangerous players, uh, young players, so they're not quite maybe as consistent as they would like. But uh, the quality they have with Eze, Elise, Zaha, obviously, um, there's players there that can that can travel with the ball well, that can attack, that can eliminate you in 1v1 situations. And then I think they've improved their build-up phase of the game. Two centre-backs are good with the ball. And um, they're, a, they're a competitive team. We're looking at the squad that they have and we're looking at, at the quality of the players that they have. We're looking at the quality of the manager that they have. And, you know, at the moment, yes, they may be in a difficult period because everything's go against them. And there's so many teams in that kind of position. Pos, uh, position, position sorry. Uh, but that doesn't take away the quality that they have. Well, without doubt, Graham Potter will be eyeing up this fixture as a must-win as the Chelsea manager. They're in their worst run of form in 11 years at Chelsea in terms of matches without wins and just not being able to put any consecutive run of results together, Tim. Why hasn't it worked under Graham Potter? Well... First and foremost, I mean, forget the injuries, what he's got, because he's got, he's got plenty. And it is, it is an excuse. Um, he's got plenty of injuries. But 10 injuries for Chelsea is like free for any other team, really, apart from Man City, because they've got the biggest squad in the, in the league. That's why they're Chelsea. That's why they're serial winners. That's why they won more than any other team in the last two decades. Mm. Um, but they have to continue to win. Um, and at the moment, he, you have to hold his hands up and say that he hasn't done the correct job. I think when he first went in there, he was trying to keep all the players happy. He was rotating the team too much. I don't think they were up to full fitness because they're not allowed to, not to full fitness because they're not allowed to, not allowed to play in a rhythm. I think half of them was 70%, 60%, 70% fit. So I think then you pay the price because when you're asked to go and do a job and you're asked to play two games on a run, you start getting injuries. The soft tissue injuries, what he's picking up at that football club at the moment, are incredible. So he has to take some responsibility for that. All the sports scientists they have now that's exactly. something they're, they're they... doing in training. It must be something they're doing. And I think it, they undertrain them. I don't think they, they play enough. They're not playing any rhythm. We know yourself, Karen, when you play and you play on a regular basis and you're playing games, you don't need to train. If you're not playing, sometimes you need to train a little bit harder. So I think they're undertrained. I think he, he successfully kept them all happy, apart from Aubameyang, I would suggest. Um, but in the end, he'll lose his job for it. He's lucky that Todd Bowley is a little bit more patient than Mr. Abramovich because he wouldn't be there. If, if Roman Abramovich was still chairman of Chelsea, with the run of results what he'd had, he would have got rid of him by now. You mentioned um, injuries there, and I'm pretty sure that they got rid of the, the top people from all the medical departments. So, again, I think yeah. you lose that experience of players that have been there maybe a long time, managing them. Even if Graham's new, Graham Potter's new, you still had an experienced staff maybe to help through that transition with certain type of players. But yeah. um, it is frustrating because when you lose a player for muscle injury, that's something you control. It is that a loading issue spot on there. Um, but I have to say in the Fulham result, the players that he was able to bring on, I think he brought ZH on. You look at that and you're thinking, wow, you're bringing those players on. You should be doing better. Yeah. You should be defending better. Um, you're too open at times. Um, but it but it is very concerning. Um, and it's just whether, because he's their first manager for the, the new owners, um, it's a decision for them to what, what do they stand for. Well, the owners are clearly investing a lot into this project under Graham Potter and the players as well. Just bringing in Jao Felix, who managed to sign in time yeah. for the match against Fulham, starts, makes his debut, but then gets sent off. And Graham Potter kind of commented on it after and said it feels like 
anything that could possibly go wrong at the moment is for him at Chelsea. Yeah, but you've you got to get sent off. When you make a tackle like that, I thought he was their best player. I really did. Mm. I thought he was excellent. I thought his link-up play was fantastic. He was a goal threat. Um, but he just got overexcited there. and I think he was drunk on emotion and uh, unfortunately it spilled over and uh, he gets a quite right red card. Is that yeah. a worry that he's their best player and he's been there two days? Yeah, it's a huge worry. Huge worry. But he's playing with freedom. Mm. You know, I think the fans really recognised it. They were giving him mm. a lot of confidence. You know, he's picking the ball up. He was driving at defenders. He was seeing a pass. He was holding it up. He was linking play. I thought he was excellent. I really did. But they're going to miss him for three games now and they can't afford to. Yeah. You said earlier, Tim, that you didn't think Liverpool would make the Champions League places. I'm assuming with where Chelsea are in the table, you don't think they've got a chance? No, I think they're a struggle as well. I where really do you do. think, what's the best they can do this season then? What should they be aiming for? I mean, they're playing catch-up and, and with the squad. I mean, the be surely the objective was to finish in the Champions League, minimum requirement when he went into the football club. Um, that drop-off is dramatic. I mean, it's hugely dramatic. I mean, what, a 10 points off of uh, uh, Manchester United there? Not good enough. I mean, they're capable, of course they are capable of putting an incredible run together. It's going to be championship, like winning form for him, for them to get to the, to the Champions League now. And you need the teams like Newcastle to, and Man United to drop out of there. Um, and obviously Liverpool will have a say in it as well. So look, they will fight right to the wire. But at the moment, you say on current form, I think they really struggle. I really do. I just think that um, they might have to make a change. I think this game is crucial. You know, the Palace... Is a managerial probably, change? Well, possibly. I mean, the fans are used to success. They're used to... Uh, an owner who keeps changing a manager if they don't win football matches, if they don't win trophies. And if you're a fan of Chelsea and they're going to say to you, hold on, we're not going to win trophies now, but we're going to build something over a period of time. If you're a Chelsea fan, you might as well go and support Tottenham, you know, because it's not what they're used to. If I'm a Chelsea fan, I don't care how many managers we go through, just as long as we keep getting a day out of the Champions League final, we keep winning Premier Leagues and we keep winning FA Cups. That's all I care, I care about. I'm not an accountant for the football club when I'm a fan. I don't worry about how much money they spend and how they're balancing their books. So I don't worry about what Todd Bowley did. You're coming to, to be a chairman of Chelsea. I want you to be exactly like our most successful chairman of all time, which is Roman Abramovich, and win trophies and give us some exciting days out. So it would be a hard transition for these Chelsea fans. be interesting to see who wins the battle. I hope that Potter keeps his job. I really do, because I want English managers to get an opportunity and do well. But I keep hearing people say he needs to have time. We all want time. All of us wanted time. You know, if we give every every manager time, they'll get it in the end. But it's when their patience run out. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we don't have much time. So let's get through the rest of the fixtures that are coming up for this.